hundredths of various verbal expressions. Materialism is a hundred thousandfold. Mahamadi, but in the twilight of the world, in the last five hundred years it will become fragmented because of being led on by wrongly conceived notions of cause. It will become fragmented because of not getting students. It is not their own doctrine but this same fragmented materialism. Mahamadi, adhering to various arguments, that is taught by philosophers, while immersed in the presumption that it is their own reasoning. For none of the philosophers has a doctrine of his own science, Mahamadi. Rather, they teach this very same materialism in many forms, with hundreds of thousands of rationales. And because of delusion they don't realize that it is not their own doctrine, that it is materialism. Mahamadi said. If. Blessed one. All the philosophers are teaching the very same materialism by means of diverse verbal expressions setting forth examples. Not their own doctrine. While immersed in the presumption that it is their own reasoning. Then does even the Blessed One also teach the same materialism with various expressions to deities. Titans, and humans gathered in different places, not your own idea, being within the teachings of doctrines of all philosophers? The Blessed One said, I do not teach materialism, Mahamadi, nor coming and going. Rather, Mahamadi, I teach no coming and going. Therein, coming derives from the arrival of the totality of occurrence, while going, Mahamadi, is annihilation. No coming and going refers to non-origination. I do not teach any of the conceptions of philosophers or religious leaders, Mahamadi. Why? Because dualistic conceptualization does not take place, because of not being engrossed in external things that don't exist because they are based on subjective construction of mental objects. Because of the non-existence of defined objects due to realizations they are constructions of what is seen by the subjective mind, conception of subjective mental objects does not go on. Because of entry into the three liberations realizing signless emptiness wherein imagination is inoperative, it is called liberated. I remember, Mahamadi, I was in another region when a materialist Brahmin approached me, and without even being acknowledged said to me, everything, Gautama, is created. I said to him, if everything is created, O Brahmin, this is the first materialism. Everything is uncreated, Gautama. If everything is uncreated, O Brahmin, this is the second materialism. So too all is permanent, all is impermanent, all is produced and all is unproduced. This last, Brahman, is the sixth materialism. The materialist Brahman also said to me, Everything, Gautama, is the same, everything is different, everything is both, everything is neither, everything is based on causes, as seen to occur from various causes. I told the Brahman this brought it up to the eleventh materialism. Furthermore, Gautama, all is unexplained. All is explained. Soul exists. Soul does not exist. This world exists. This world does not exist. The next world exists, the next world does not exist, the next world both exists and does not exist, there is liberation, there is no liberation, all is momentary, all is not momentary. Space, extinction without consciousness, and nirvana, O Gautama, are created, are uncreated. There is intermediate existence, there is no intermediate existence. I said this to him. If so, O Brahman, this is materialism. It is not mine. O Brahman, this materialism is yours. I describe the triple world as caused without meaning by the influence of conceptually elaborated imagination since beginningless time. Imagination only goes on, O Brahman, because of not realizing it is only subjective mental objects not due to apprehending external things. What occurs to philosophers with their triplex combination of soul, sense, and object, does not occur to me. I, O Brahman, do not propose causality or a causality, except that I teach interdependent occurrence, representing it conceptually in terms of object and subject. It is not understood by the likes of you and others whose mental continuum is fallen into self-grasping. The reality of nirvana, space, and extinction, Mahamadi, is not apprehended in reasoning, much less as something created. Furthermore, 
Mahamadi, the Brahmin materialist also said, is this triple world, O Gautama, caused by ignorance, craving, and action, or is it causeless? These two are both materialism, O Brahmin. All things, O Gautama, fall within the particular and the general. This too, O Brahmin, is materialism. Whatever the mental agitation associated with imagination engrossed in external objects, O Brahmin, that is materialism. The Brahmin materialist also said to me, Is there anything at all, O Gautama, that is not materialism? This same holding of mine is taught by all philosophers as established, by means of various verbal expressions presenting paradigms of reasoning. There is, O Brahmin, that which is not this holding of yours, but neither is it not taught as established, nor without using diverse verbal expressions, nor without making sense. What is that which is not materialism which is not taught as established? There is, O Brahman, non-materialism where the intellect of all philosophers, and you, who are engrossed in conceptual elaboration of false imagination of external things, does not penetrate. That is, the non-development of imaginations of being and non-being. Because of awareness it is only subjective mental objects, imagination does not evolve. Because there is no grasping of external things, imagination is seen remaining in its own state. So this is my non-materialism, not yours. Remaining in its own state means it does not evolve or develop. It is called the non-development of inefficient imagination. It is this, O Brahman, that is not materialism. In sum, Brahman, where there is coming and going of consciousness, disappearance and emergence, Wishful obsession, theory, opinion, position, grasping, immersion in diverse appearances, the meeting of people with cravings, and immersion in rationalization, this is materialism, O Brahman. It is your holding, not mine. Thus was I approached and questioned, Mahamadi, by the Brahman materialist. And thus dismissed by me, he went off silent. At that, Time a serpent king from the dark side came in the form of a Brahmin and said to the Blessed One, Then, Gautama, there is no other world. Then where did you come from, young man? I have come from White Island, Gautama. Even that, Brahmin, is another world. Then the young Brahmin, speechless, withdrew from sight without even asking me contrary exposition of my own doctrine, thinking, the shaken is unfortunate being outside my doctrine, declaring an operative cause. He recommends that conception not take place, by understanding it as a description of subjective imagination. And now you ask me, Mahamadi, why one who pursues the inspiration of the various formulas of materialism becomes absorbed in desire, not absorbed in truth? Mahamadi said, then what do truth and desire mean? The Blessed One said, good, good, Mahamadi. Profound thought has been given to the meanings of these two words, out of consideration for those to be born in the future. So listen, Mahamadi, and take it to heart accurately and aptly. I will tell you. Very well, Blessed One. So saying, Mahamadi the Great Bodhisattva listened to the Blessed One. The Blessed One said this to him. What, then, Mahamadi, is desire? It refers to desire, touch, attraction, caressing, fondling, charm, immersion in eternal objects, getting into dual extremes. From mistaken notions. Furthermore. Comes the manifestation of the clusters, the development of birth, old age, sickness, death, sorrow, lament, misery, depression, distress, beginning with craving producing renewed existence. This is called desire, by me and other blessed Buddhas. This, Mahamadi, is absorption in desire, not absorption in truth, which a materialist gets practicing materialism. Then what, Mahamadi, is absorption in truth? It means that false imagination does not develop due to realization of the twofold selflessness of one's own mind and of phenomena. Seeing the selfless character of phenomena and personality. Detachment from thought. Intellect, and cognitive consciousness due to successive knowledge of the stages, reaching anointment with knowledge by all Buddhas, attaining a state of independence, mastery of ability not to 
indulge in all things, is called truth, by virtue of not falling into dual extremes produced by imagination elaborating all views. 4. Generally speaking, Mahamedi, the doctrines of philosophers and religious leaders, but not of the intelligent, makes the unsophisticated fall into two extremes, namely annihilation and eternity. By accepting a doctrine of no cause, the notion of eternity comes to be, and the notion of annihilation comes about from the non-existence of cause in the sense of negation of instrumentality. But I speak of truth as such from perception of origination, abiding, and dissolution. This, Mahamedi, is the determination of truth and desire which you and other great bodhisattvas should learn. So it is said. Restrain people by the integrative methods and control them with discipline. Eliminate opinion by insight, let people grow by liberations. Everything taught by dogmatists is materialism, desire. With a notion of effect and cause as true, their own conclusion is not found. I alone teach a doctrine of my own to a group of disciples. Apart from effect and cause, apart from materialism. The full measure of mind is not perceptible. Mind is perceived divided. Into what apprehends and what is apprehended, apart from eternity and annihilation. As long as thought goes on, that is materialism. By one in whom false imagination does not go on, the world is seen as subjective thought. What comes is accomplishment of an objective, what goes is perception of an object. By thorough knowledge of coming and going, false imagination does not develop. Permanent or impermanent, created or uncreated. Other or not other. The likes of these can all be materialist doctrine. At that time Mahamedi, the great Bodhisattva, also said this to the Blessed One. The Blessed One repeatedly refers to Nirvana. What is the meaning of this word nirvana which is misconstrued by all dogmatists? The Blessed One said, Then listen, Mahamedi, and take it to heart accurately and aptly. I will tell you. Nirvana is not as dogmatists imagine nirvana. Very well, Blessed One. So saying, the great Bodhisattva Mahamedi listened to the Blessed One. The Blessed One told him, in the case of some of the dogmatists, Mahamedi, the totality of mind and mental factors does not act, because of not seeing any difference, due to dispassion toward objects because of the extinction of the clusters, elements, and media of sense. They explain the inactivation of discrimination as cessation of perceiving, like an extinguished lamp, a burnt seed, or a fire gone out, by not remembering past, future, or present objects. Hence their understanding of nirvana is therein. But, Mahamedi, one does not experience nirvana through nihilism. Others describe liberation as going to another place, by the association of thoughts of objects like a spent arrow or wind stopping. Other philosophers explain liberation as annihilation of perception of intelligence and information. Others imagine liberation from the notions of permanence or impermanence by an activation of discrimination. Yet others describe conceptualization of various omens as harbingers of misery, not knowing they are construction of subjective mental objects. Smitten by fear of omens, because of belief in omens. They come to have an understanding of nirvana grounded in desire for happiness. Still others imagine nirvana in terms of unperishing existence past, future, and present through comprehension of the particular and common characteristics of all phenomena, internal and external.